رباه عفوك إني للنور مدة يداي نزعت أسرار قلبي وجبت ألقي أسا الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران المجيد بعد ان اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَإِذْ يُرِيكُمُ اللَّهُ وَإِذْ يُرِيكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنَامِكَ قَلِيلًا وَلَوْ أَرَاكَهُمْ كَثِيرًا لَفَشِلْتُمْ وَلَتَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ سَلَّمَ إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ وقال تعالى وتلك الأيام نداولها بين الناس وليعلم الله الذين آمنوا ويتخذ منكم شهداء والله لا يحب الظالمين وليمحص الله الذين آمنوا ويمحق الكافرين وقال تعالى ولقد نعلم أنك يضيق صدرك بما يقولون فسبح بحمد ربك وكن من الساجدين واعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين صدق الله العظيم رب الشحل صدري والسر لأمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا اللهم نور قلوبنا بعلمك واستعمل أبداننا لطاعتك ووفقنا لما تحب وترضى من قول والعمل والفعل والنية والهدى إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم إن نعوذ بك من شر نفوسنا اللهم إن نعوذ بك من شر الشيطان والشرك الله اللهم إننا نعوذ بك من إبليس وجنوده اللهم إننا نعوذ بك من شر ذنوبنا آمين يا رب العالمين Beloved brothers and sisters, dear elders Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh As we, the world struggles to work on the narrative of what is taking place overseas and brothers and sisters across all different social media platforms as well as in our masajid are trying our best to ensure that the correct representation of what is taking place is presented to the world. And an effort and a war, if I may call it that definitely, is happening on this, in social media and in news outlets of how the events are to be properly presented. I want to shift our attention for a moment towards not just the narrative aspect of it, but rather perspective aspect of it. That as a believer, we have to ensure that we process whatever happens around us from an Islamic perspective. And as long as we have that perspective, then no matter what you and I are going through in our daily lives, from this morning till now, from this afternoon till the evening, in our own homes, between ourselves and our spouses, between us and our children and our parents, between us and our employer, between us and those, our neighbors, and of course, the world's events, if a believer has a proper perspective, then he will realize that as a believer, he's always winning. And as a believer, he always has the upper hand as a true believer. And these are the beautiful teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. In the past week and more, I've been asked repeatedly from people whose sons and daughters, unfortunately, are struggling to keep their faith from beforehand. They are have by name Muslim, culturally only Muslim. One foot in atheism, one foot on the way out from Islam. Many of our brothers and sisters have such sons and daughters. So they say, how do I explain to my son and daughter about the situation that we are dealing with, where Muslim blood is being spilled faster than water, and Muslim lives, and especially that of even children and civilians, women, is been treated as though we are swatting maybe not even flies something more despicable and lowly than that and so a question arises in the minds of those who have weakness in their heart that why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this if he truly exists maybe this is a stronger strong proof that he doesn't exist oh dear mother oh dear father maybe you have been deceived by your scholars and by your parents to fall into this Myth of a God that is all powerful. Because if he was around, he would have surely come to the assistance of the innocent children and women and men who are being slaughtered. This is a question parents have been asking me this week and have asked in the past when such events happen. So, what is the alternative? The alternative is to believe in what? 
in nothing. The alternative is to believe that this world is running on its own. Of course, there is absolutely no one in charge. And as an atheist, the belief is that there is no such thing as day of judgment. There is no such thing as reward and punishment in the hereafter. So a person who leads a very upright life, taking care of not only of his parents and his children and his spouse, but goes out of his way to take care of plants, animals and the environment. He and a murderer of innocent children will be in the same spot after they die. They both will be dust and that's it. No matter how much good you do in this world, there is no reward. And no matter how much evil you plague this earth with, there is no punishment. That is the viewpoint of an atheist who doesn't believe in God, in Allah, in the hereafter. That there is no such thing as retribution, punishment. There's no such thing as reward and jaza. I don't know about you, but I feel like that is the worst type of attitude a person can have. That no matter what you do, it doesn't make a difference. You can press your mother's feet every day, or Allah forbid, kill your own mother. The end result is the same. And subhanAllah, so those people who think that Islam's theology and belief in God or the theists who believe in an all-powerful God is somehow flawed due to the incidents that are taking place today. I ask them, what is the alternative? How powerfully, powerful is your narrative? And how logical is your narrative that this world is running on autopilot and it will crash one day and no matter what a person does, it doesn't make a difference. There is no such thing as reward or punishment. I don't know about you, but I'm sure you're with me on this, that that is the most fatalistic, depressing type of outlook on life. Now, as a believer, all of us who believe in the Day of Judgment, what happens for us, no matter what the situation is, it's always a good day. And the Prophet ﷺ said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنْ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ How strange is the affair of a believer? How strange is the affair of a believer? All his affairs are always good. Every day of his is a successful day. Every day of his is a beautiful sunny day. There's no such thing as a gloomy day. Do, does he not become sad? Yes, he becomes sad when someone dies in his family, when he loses his job, when his parents pass away. How could he not be sad? But he always understands that there is the hidden wisdom of Allah behind this. There's something called the sunnah of Allah, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. For example, Allah has made this world a place of intiqal, of coming and going. This entire world is like an airport. Kunfid dunya. Right? Or Rasulullah Sallallahu comes and tells him, Oh Muhammad, live ma shit, ish ma shit. Live as long as you want. However, however many years you, you're, it's destined for you. One day you have to die. We have not created for any human being before you a life of eternity. If you are meant to die, can anyone else think that they will live forever? It's painful. It's 100% those who lost their moms and their dads and their spouses. It's a painful day to lose your mom and dad. Yesterday I attended a janazah where a brother lost his mother. You know, naturally, that day is going to come to all of us. But as a believer, we know that behind this painful experience of losing a parent or a child or a sibling or a spouse, there has to be a silver lining. And what is that? We have faith. That all of this is a process that we all have to go through. And as long as a person died with Iman, then what awaits them in the hereafter, inshallah, is goodness. Eventually, goodness. And that we have an opportunity to help those souls who have gone away through sadaqah jariya, through continuous charity, through dua, and so forth. So a believer is always happy. The Prophet said, how, so, how beautiful is the affair of a believer? In amrahu kullahu lo khair, always his situation is good. In asaba to sarra, if good things happen to him, prosperity, health, wealth, children, you know, success, material success, spiritual success, goals are being met. Then what happens? You don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel bad. But rather, shakara, you simply have to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fakana khayran la, it's good for you. I know. Many of us will be eating with our family out tonight, tomorrow, yesterday. And like me, your mind goes to what's happening abroad. 
when I look at my children. Honestly, I'm telling you, and I'm sure many of you are like that. Sometimes this thought comes, here I am, cuddling up with my kids. SubhanAllah, what's happening on the other side? So when this happens to me, should I feel guilty and let them go? Should I distance myself from my wife and my kids? Should I say, khalas, I'm not going to spend any money on you to eat today? No, that's not the way to do it. Shakara. You thank Allah and speak to your wife and your kids about the blessings we're enjoying. And collectively and individually engage in shukr. That, Ya Allah, I don't deserve these blessings of health and safety and security and wealth. Ya Allah, I'm going to say Alhamdulillah through my tongue. I want my heart to say Alhamdulillah. And my actions will speak louder than my words. I will act like a grateful servant of yours. And the flip side of it, when difficulties come your way, loss of life, loss of wealth, loss of children, loss of business, loss of, uh, of respect, as Allah says, Most definitely we shall test you. Most definitely we shall test you. Be shayin with some of ju'a, hunger, khawf, fear. Naqsum min al-amwal, decrease in your wealth. Wal-anfus, decrease in the lives of your family and people around you. Wal-thamarat, and the fruits of your labor. What should you do at that time? Wabashir is sabirin. Give glad tidings to those who remain steadfast and remain patient. So a believer, when he suffers these five categories of loss or any other type of loss, what is his response? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, His response is, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is exactly what you hear in every audio clip and video clip that's coming from across the globe. That's what they all say. We never belonged to this world. We never belonged to our mom and dad. We never belonged to our spouse. We never belonged to our children. We never belonged to our country. We belong to Allah. And Allah may choose to call us back anytime He wants. We were here passing by through this world. And we are not going. He didn't say, وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ ذَهِبُونَ We are going towards Allah. And says, وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Rujua means to come back. Dhahib means to go. We are supposed to say we are going back to Allah. Because we came from paradise and we are going back to paradise, inshaAllah. When a person goes to a new place, you're worried, you're scared. But when you go back, home sweet home. No matter where you come from, everyone loves to go back home. And this is the word Allah uses. Oh, the content soul, come back to your Lord. Come back home, come back to your Lord. In a state, you're pleased with Allah, and Allah is pleased with you. You're pleased with what Allah has prepared for you. You're pleased with, with what difficulty Allah has put you through. Because you know behind that difficulty is some wisdom that you may not have understood. A trust. The child, when, he, when the child is a certain age, five, six years old, and his father and mother take him to the doctor, dentist. It's painful. It hurts. He may cry. But if the child is mature enough, eight, nine years old, he understands that my mom and dad still love me more than anyone else. They're actually paying for this procedure from their hard-earned money. It's painful, but it's necessary for me so that I remain healthy. Similarly, when a believer has basira and understanding of Allah and Allah's actions, he has to accept the painful reality of life. That although this hurts, but it is a needed thing for me. There is a place Allah has set for me in paradise. And I'm not going to be able to reach it unless Allah allows me to go through this process. And I have to clench my teeth, close my hands, make a fist, and say, Inna lillahi wa inna Or say, Allahumma sabbirni, oh Allah grant me patience. And whatever else, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal, wa'udhu billahi min hali ahlin nar. When someone says, how are you doing? What have we been taught to say? Alhamdulillah. But look at this dua. Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. All praise belongs to Allah in every condition. Brother, you're suffering. Look at you. Oh my God, look at what happened to your leg. Look at him at your foot. Look at him at your wife. Look at him at your kids. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. I praise Allah in every situation. Wa'udhu billah. And I seek refuge in Allah from the condition of the people of hellfire. Exactly. That's something? No, 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 no. At all costs, I got to stay away from that. And besides anything else besides that, I can take it. I can take it. 
Because what does fire mean? Hellfire. Hellfire means a person is earned the wrath of Allah. And none of us can handle the wrath of Allah. None of us can handle the wrath of Allah. If you lose life, you lose money, you lose health, you lose anything, that does not mean you are in the wrath of Allah. That is simply a test like our Prophet ﷺ went through a test. Many may hear, may not even know a single person who has lost one child. If you know, you know someone, maybe you lost one, personally. The Prophet ﷺ, beloved friends, from his seven, he had to witness the death of his six children. Six out of seven he had to witness. Along with being born as an orphan and losing his mother at the age of six, hundreds of kilometers away from the nearest town, in the midst of a desert, with only one young girl with him. He's six years old, his, the dead body of his mom, and one young lady. That's it. How could something be more painful than that? This is, just, this is just at the age of six. If you have a child of six, I want you to put the, your child in the situation of the Prophet at the age of six. Not having a dad and losing the mother in Abwa, hundreds of kilometers away from the nearest town. But the, Allah Azza wa Jal, He loves our Nabi more than anyone else. We know that. The center Allah Azza wa Jal has made him. But look at the test he made him go through in every single part of his life, including the fact that losing seven, six children and the last one, Fatima, who passed away six months after his departure from this world. The Prophet ﷺ lived through this difficulty, showed, shows us that going through difficulty by no means indicates that a person is disliked by Allah. Quite the contrary, the Prophet ﷺ said, that ashaddu nasi bala'an, the people who get tested the most, Al-Anbiya are the Prophets. The ones who have the most difficult time in this world are the Prophets. Thumma al-amthal fal amthal And then those who come after them in piety, and then those who come after them in piety. The closer you are to Allah, the hardship, the hardship increases. فَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ صَلَابًا If you're strong in your faith, زِيدَ فِي بَلَائِهِ Your tests are increased. وَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ خِفَّةً And if you're weak in your faith, خُفِّفَ عَنْهُ Then the difficulties are reduced. حَتَّى يَمْشِ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ خَطِيئَةً A day comes that he's walking on this world, on the earth, without a single sin in his book of deeds, purely due to his patience. Beloved brothers and sisters, the perception the world may have is one thing, but the perception you and I need to have of the world's events, as well as the events at our home, has to be one that is based on positivity, has to be one that is based on trust in Allah's plan. When a roller coaster goes crazy, apparently they go pretty crazy out there. A person who's sitting on there, he may be screaming at the top of his lungs, maybe, maybe even puking. But inside his heart, if you ask him after his interview, did you think you're gonna die? Most of the people I would say, would probably respond, no. I knew it's scary, I expected it, and I knew there's a certain track that it's running on, and there's an engineer running it, and it's been very well planned and built. Although it's a crazy roller coaster. Similarly, at least that level of trust you have when you go to an amusement park, we have to have at least that level of trust in Allah's plan. That the world seems to be a roller coaster. Your life or the life of many others. But a person needs to have this trust that the engineer and the architect of all of it is Allah. Al Wahid, Al Qahar, Al Ghalib, Al Aziz. The most powerful, the one who cannot be subdued. Al Hakim, the most wise. What exactly he does, we cannot question. However, we need to have that level of trust that what he does, Al Hakim, Fi'lul Hakim, La Yahu Al Hikmah, that the actions of a wise person are not, apt, are not free of any wisdom. Rather, they are filled with wisdom. We have to have always this positivity that everything that happens, وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا A leaf cannot fall without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beloved brothers and sisters, let me tie it up to our end now, is that when a person, we have to have this balance. Our children need to be aware of what's happening, and need to be educated. Because otherwise, Allah forbid, Allah forbid, if our children live in luxury like we do, and have, are absolutely disconnected from any type of hardship, not just in the Muslim world, no, anywhere, this is a huge problem. A huge problem for our, our children, like they say, this is a snowflake generation that can't handle anything. Our children need to be informed about human suffering. They need to know what others are going through. Otherwise, they'll become hard-hearted. Otherwise, they'll become spoiled. 
They need to see, they need to experience. If possible, travel to areas that, that you can be part of a humanitarian effort. Just down the street, you have Haiti, right? Just in Central America, you have so many places that have been ravaged by so many natural disasters. Similarly, create an environment in our homes where our children learn how to sympathize with those who are suffering and learn how to become grateful for the blessings that Allah has given us. Number two, the opposite end of it is 24-7 you just watch destruction, havoc, killing, bloodshed. That's not healthy for anyone. Because that just leads to a person becoming emotionally drained. And a person not just giving up in life. There's only a limit to how much you can take. Beloved brothers, you have to manage that right in between. Enough for us to not become hard-hearted. But not so much that we become overwhelmed. And that instead of using this emotions towards positivity, especially in the form of dua and dhikr and salah and crying in front of Allah, that Allah forbid that leads to a sense of despondency, which does no one good, not to us and not to anyone who is suffering. I ask Almighty Allah Azza wa that He grants us that level of faith that allows us to have this conviction that whatever good and bad happens in the world is through the decree of Allah. And may He always make us amongst those who are pleased with the decree of Allah, be it with us, our own personal lives, or anywhere else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us always to remain positive and to be able to see the silver lining behind every difficulty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not test the ummah more than we can handle. Those of us who are being tested with blessing, may He allow us to remain grateful. And those who are being tested with difficulty, may Allah Azza wa allow them to remain patient. I ask Allah not to remove the blessings that we have due to our ungratefulness. And I ask Allah Azza wa to remove the difficulty that the others are going through due to their patience and their crying and their pleas. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayuhal ladhin amanu quu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara wa quudu hannas wal hajara alayha malaikatun ghilaadun shidaad la ya'asoon Allah ma amanhum wa yaf'aloon ma yu'maroon. Wa qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ma'al hadith inna ad-deen bad غريبة وسيعود غريبة فطوبى للغرباء الذين يصلحون ما أفسد الناس من سنة من بعدي أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على سيدنا محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر رضي الله عنه وأشهدهم في أبن الله عمر رضي الله عنه وأصدقهم حياء عثمان رضي الله عنه وأقضاهم علي رضي الله عنه عن جميع الصحابة والصحابة أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وحفظ الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم هدينا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عديت تباركت ربنا وتعالي نستغفرك اللهم من جميع الذنوب والخطايا ونتوب إليك اللهم أصلح لنا دينا الذي هو عصبة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم وحد صفوف المسلمين اللهم اجمع كلمة مع الحق المبين اللهم إننا نجعلك في نحورهم ونعوذ بك من شرورهم اللهم احفظنا من بين يدينا ومن خلفنا وعن إيماننا وعن شمائلنا ومن فوقنا ونعوذ بك من أن نقتال من تحت أقدامنا آمين يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله أمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وذكر الله العلي العظيم يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تستعون وأقيم الصلاة Please fill up the rows, stand shoulder to shoulder, ensure there's no gaps in between, make space for the brothers in the back. Let's stand, inshallah, from wall to wall, ensure that all the spots are taken. As we are filling up the rows, I want to quickly make an announcement, inshallah. We, as they said, the local police department is going to be here after Jum'ah. The chief, etc., will be sharing some words. Please be respectful and uh, listen attentively whatever they would like to share. Additionally, I just want to do a quick uh, uh, ten, uh, uh, reminder tonight, inshallah, uh, we'll be speaking at Frisco Masjid. And we'll have a conversation regarding uh, a lot of the supernatural things from hasad, the evil effects of sihar, black magic, sihar, hasad, etc. And the treatments for that, understanding this concept, myself and the other co-panelists, inshallah, at Frisco Masjid tonight inshallah so please join us if possible tonight at 8 30 p.m at the at the frisco masjid we have a line of other programs we have our booth daru salam booth outside we're not fundraising just let you know about whatever programs we're taking place please do stop by at the booth and speak to omar and Uthman who are there additionally there are flyers for our winter intensive december 23rd to 25th 
at the seminary in Chicago. It's an awesome opportunity for college students and their moms and dads to come and attend a beautiful workshop, three days uh, intensive on uh, different topics. This year we're going to be talking about contemporary fiqh topics in, in the modern world and how, it, how, is, how, did the, how our fiqh applies to a modern day. Very important topics, so please pick up a flyer on your way out. Inshallah, buses from Dallas, inshallah, will be going. You can sign up for that at the booth outside. Jazakumullah khairan.